All right, this is Will, KI4POV, showing off a uh, binaural direct conversion receiver. This is part of my version of Kurt's simple direct conversion CW transceiver project that he has been spearheading on QRP Tech. And I know Daniel mentioned that he wanted to see some videos of some of these working, so here's my version. Um, excited to see what other people come up with here. I think it's really neat that everybody seems to have their own slight take and variations on what they end up building, but uh, it's gonna be fun to see what everybody comes up with. All right, so I'll just walk you through what we have going on here real quick. So I actually have two direct conversion receivers side by side here, uh, and that's certainly not necessary for the basic transceiver that's been discussed. I wanted to play around with the idea of a binaural receiver, which is uh, two receivers that are fed 90 degrees out of phase from the LO, uh, which gives you sort of a stereo 3D effect. It's hard to describe if you haven't heard it, but it's been fun to play around with. Uh, so real quick, kind of what we have going on here. We have our Arduino SI5351 combo over here. Uh, here's our display, so if we can get that to focus. I'm listening to some SSB right now. And then moving over to the main board, we have them. Bit of a rat's nest with wire, certainly not ideal for isolation and noise reduction, but it's working for now, and when it gets boxed up, boxed up we'll shorten up some of these leads. Uh, so over here, flipped upside down at the moment, is our bandpass filter. That's feeding into this guy right here. This is a splitter, a zero degrees splitter, just so we get even splitting of the incoming signal between the two receivers. Then that feeds into our two SBO1s. And then I'll just pick one of these and kind of walk you through each stage. So we have our SBO1 mixer feeding a diplexer here. Uh, so it's very simple. We've got a, a combination of a uh, uh, inductor wound on FT37-43. Um, and a 22 microhenry electrolytic down here. And then that's also bypassed on the other side. If we can get that to focus, to ground. We've got a coupling capacitor and a 51 ohm uh, resistor to ground over here. That's bypassing that non-audio signal coming out of the mixer straight to ground so you get good termination there. Uh, the rat's nest of what's coming after that is our audio preamp stage. So we have uh, three total stages of audio preamp, one, two, three. Those three transistors across there. Uh, when I originally built these, I had some very simple RC audio filtering between these two stages, right in this kind of empty spot here. I uh, ended up taking that out just because part of the point of a binaural receiver is to have it just completely wide open and your ears end up doing some of the filtering as the signals uh, fade from one side to the other. Uh, so again, just playing around with that. And then moving down here past our uh, preamp stages, we're feeding into the LM386. You can see uh, right here on the edge of the board. And rather than have the uh, audio pot off the board uh, that would be mounted on the panel, I've just got trim pots on both sides there. And I've just got those adjusted so that the level coming out is approximately equal on both sides. So you get good adjustment there. Uh, the way we're adjusting the volume actually is an RF gain control all the way back over here. Uh, the antenna is actually feeding straight into the um, center connection of this uh, potentiometer here, uh, and that's how we're adjusting the signal for both receiver, uh, both receivers simultaneously. So you don't have to have any kind of fancy gained potentiometers or anything like that. Okay, so let's turn up the volume here and listen to it for a minute yeah, so you can hear what it sounds like. And this is feeding through my computer speakers uh, over here to the sides, so that's where our audio is coming from at the moment. And it's got very clear audio on SSB. Sounds very good, as you would expect an unfiltered DC receiver to. They sound very clear. Um, you can hear 
whistles and uh, signals from adjacent stations that are several kilohertz away because there's no filtering whatsoever. So even a couple of kilohertz away, you'll still be hearing them. All right, let's jump back down to the CW part of the band real quick so you can hear that, and we'll sign off here. So I'm just going to reset the Arduino. I've got it set so it defaults to 7040. We'll turn our volume up a little bit, and I'll see if I can tune this one-handed. So you can hear the signal getting lower as we turn towards zero beat. I think this is W1AW where code practice we're listening to. There's zero beat there, the signal goes away. We turn across the other side. And there's the other side band. If you hear the slight rhythmic ticking in the background, the tick, 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 tick. That's actually interference from my cell phone that I'm videoing with. If I back up a little bit, that will go away. Again, all these open wires are not particularly ideal, but we'll tidy that up as we move forward with the project. Also, there's a thunderstorm in the area tonight, so there are some static crashes. All right, but um, that's what I've got going on here at the moment. Um, you can see your rotary encoder down here, just kind of hanging off loosely. That that need to be tidied up. Uh, just feeding this with a USB cable coming off the computer. Again, not ideal. There is potential for noise there, but it sounds pretty good at the moment. Uh, and power for the rest of this is coming from the old reliable Radio Shack power supply up top here that I use for powering most of my projects. All right, so I'll sign off there and say 73 and looking forward to seeing what everybody else comes up with.